Hello there, thanks for joining us for Reporters Plus on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson. Now, in this programme, an African state where Russian mercenaries are a growing presence. Since 2017, the Wagner Group, a company and an effective secret army of the Kremlin, has had paid fighters on the ground in Central African Republic. They protect the impoverished country's regime in exchange for valuable mineral resources. All of this accompanied by a massive propaganda campaign to cover up for the crimes they're accused of. Well, Russia is seen to be using Central African Republic as a testing ground for a new battle for global influence, all while taking advantage of France's loss of influence in its former colony, a country ripped apart by decades of bloody civil war. Carole Valade and Clément Diroma report for France 24. In Bangui, thousands of miles from Kyiv, crowds wave the Russian flag. It's the capital of the Central African Republic, a former French colony. <laughs> Russia asked Ukraine to stop the attacks, but they didn't comply. Then Russia attacked Ukraine. You should know that. The protests are run by an anti-French group, financed by Russia. Russia is having a hard time, so we must support them. This protest is only to show them the Central African Republic supports Russia at all costs. Russia's support is crucial to the Central African Republic. The country has been in civil war for decades and fresh violence flared up last year. The government, threatened by the rebels surrounding the capital, rallied all the forces at their disposal. You are defending the country from rebels and mercenaries. We mustn't give up even one centimeter of our national territory. You've shown our support at ease. Alongside the army of the Central African Republic, we can now see white men with masks. As per a defense agreement with Moscow, thousands of Russian soldiers arrived in the Central African Republic, mercenaries working for the Wagner Group, a shadow army that serves the Kremlin without officially doing so. They are the personal bodyguards of Faustin Arkanj Tuadera, the president of the Central African Republic. <laughs> Moscow uses its pawns to undermine French influence in Africa. Russian flags fly over Moscow tanks at ceremonies. Even Moscow's musicians celebrate this alliance. The Russian propaganda machine is at full throttle. The army and the Russian allies pushed the rebels away from the cities a year later. Day-to-day -day life in Bangui resumed. The mercenaries are still there, but more discreet. They don't want to be caught on film. Students are back at the country's only university for the first time since the war. Among them, Tresor Adum, 
who's completing law school. He's a staunch supporter of Russian intervention. Stability is the result of the hard work of our allies. What I mean by allies is the Russian army. Because of the security and stability, we're hopeful that our brothers will have a better education. After class, Tresor waits by the gates of the university. The Russians have built a monument here in honor of their soldiers. <laughs> a woman with her children behind and the soldier in the front. It says a lot. It speaks to the security situation for many people. The soldiers are Central African Armed Forces and the Russians. When I see this, I see hope. Today, for a mother or children, but tomorrow it could be for me. They will protect us, and it reassures me because when we're attacked, they'll protect me. When I see this, I'm happy and grateful, and I applaud them for what they do. The hope that Russians have awakened belies the tragic and bloody past of the country and the suffering of the five million inhabitants during the massacre that was the Civil War. Bangui still bears the scars of the battles. In Tresor's area, near the road, lie the bodies of militia victims killed in 2013. Here we have... from there, up to here, one, two, three, four, five tombs. The cemetery for civilians, those killed by the rebels. Each time I come here, I pay my respects. It reminds us of our brothers and sisters who lost their lives in the tragedy. There was a time when we couldn't cross the street because of the rebels. I personally went through a lot. The scars of 2013 are still fresh, and the town foresees a new disaster. Eight years later, the rebels are back on the city's doorstep, behind those hills. They were over there, some of them already in the capital, dressed up as civilians. With the help of Russians and Rwandans, they were repelled and calm has returned to the country. They were pushed to the far ends of the country. It gives us hope that we won't relive our past. Years of chaos have left the country and its economy on its knees. Most people of the Central African Republic don't have enough to eat. Many people in Bangui feel that France, their former colonizer, has abandoned them. A fertile soil to plant new ideas. Financed by the Russians and the government, Tresor and his friends rally in support of Moscow. Today's youth has changed. We're changing things. There's always rebels in land. But in the past three months, thanks to Russia, there's an improvement. It's up to the youth to take the lead today. The pro-Russian speech is well calculated. He carries a Russian flag instead of a French one. Look at our history. Russia never colonized Africa. We're not against France, but against her harmful policies. How many years with France? Look at us. How many coups, how many mutinies, 
how many presidents have we lost? Today, we've been with the Russians for some time. We have good results, and that has driven me to support Russia. We want our well-being, right? To move freely. Today we're safe. Children go to school, study, and we can see that. We wave the Russian flag to say thank you to Russia and Vladimir Putin. The pro-Russia discourse is mixed up with arguments against a France of waning influence a vacuum that Moscow is filling quickly. The local beer, owned by a French group, is the most popular drink. It's now facing a new contender. Russia expands its influence to the bars in Bangui, with the first vodka sold in the Central African Republic, made by a firm close to the Russian mercenaries. It's made in the Central African Republic with Russian technology. It's strong, but it's okay. It's not that strong. It gives you energy. In 2021, Russian propaganda made it to the big screen. In Bangui, Thousands of people went to see a Russian action movie filmed in the car. The film was made by a firm belonging to the Wagner Group and shows mercenary activity in the country. It looks like an American blockbuster movie with some small differences. We've decided our film will be based on facts, on real-life action scenes that actually happened to us. Wagner goes all in to make the car a victim. It sounds like an old tune to conquer hearts and win minds. I see myself acting. I was great, really. Melo, a young actor, got the main role in Tourist. The role of a lifetime, where he plays the Russian's enemy. Ce ne sont pas ces gens de nouvelles que moi je voudrais entendre. M'avez-vous compris? Et voilà, je pense qu'il est mieux pour vous de quitter le pays, pour votre sécurité. Garde, allons-y, allons-y. A unique but risky opportunity for Melo to play the past president, Boziz, public enemy of the country is not without risk. <laughs> they think because I played him, I am Bozizé. There's no picture of me with them. I worked, no connection to Russia. They needed good actors, so I did my job. Someone always says, you're with Bozizé and points at me, thinking I'm one of them. My family will... They're all here, my children. What will I leave for them? I have nothing. Without a national film industry, being an actor is hard. 
Melo dreamed of an international career, changing their lives. You see my family and where I live. I have nothing for an actor in a big film, a film that was a hit in the Central African Republic. Anywhere else, I would be in a big car, maybe building a villa for myself and my children, you know? You see how I work here? You see this environment? Just a year earlier, Melo was on the red carpet in front of a crowd. Today, the posters have faded, the seats are empty, and Melo is caught up in a conflict far bigger than him. Today, it's the war of the media. The war of the media, communication. Everyone tries to have the biggest army out there. There's many angles to this conflict. The Russians are only a small part of it. They only dealt with what concerns them. But there's a lot more. What the film and the propaganda don't show you is the mercenaries' victims. Torture, rape, murder, looting and other war crimes. The UN accuses the Russians of hundreds of abuses. Local NGOs discreetly gather testimonies in the capital. Leila is 25 and the widow of a gold dealer in the center of the country. Her husband was killed by the Russian army. My husband traveled to the gold and diamond mines to resell them in Bambavi. I learned the army was leading an operation over there. I told him, but he took the risk anyway. He had done nothing wrong and wanted to join me and the kids. The Russian army arrested him. They stole his diamonds, gold and gifts. First they tried to kill him with a shotgun, but it was jammed. So they tied him and stabbed him with a knife. The mercenaries take the mines to resell the gold and diamonds. They're committed to fighting the rebels, whose economy rests on selling the ore. The people are not safe. They're in the middle, one side and the other. They both commit violence against civilians. It's become normalized. It upsets no one anymore. And it's not over. It's getting worse. There's many stories like Leila's, most of them covered up for fear of reprisals. The Fula and Muslim communities are targeted by the army. Mercenaries think of them as rebels. Thousands run away from violence and persecution. Many settle here for fear of the Russians. Out here, we didn't see the official Russia, but the unofficial one led by their military corporation, Wagner. If they had chased those rebels away, but they didn't free us, we get punished. They have no law or faith. We condemn that. Ali is one of the few to speak with his face uncovered. When the Russians came, 
all critical voices were silenced. Any objection was not allowed, especially in the president's area, where children learn to praise the mercenaries. <laughs> The writer of this song is a powerful minister and presidential advisor. It is political at a different level, and it's educational for children. We call onto those who protect the weak, and that needs to be remembered. Never mind the international investigation documenting the massacre of civilians at the hands of the Russians. There's no respect for human rights, so they crushed them in a brutal and savage way. It's similar to what the rebels do, burning houses, stealing cattle. There are no prisoners here. They must be crushed. Moscow has long denied Wagner's presence. Mercenaries are illegal in Russia. But today, for the first time, the Kar government admits to their presence, and Wagner steps out of the shadows. We signed a deal with the Russian Federation. If Putin, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces sends us Wagner, it's not our problem. They're just Russians to us. They come to work with us and help us. If they're Russian, whether they're called Beethoven or Mozart, they are here to defend the democracy of our republic. We accept them and would love to have French Foreign Legion, the mercenaries from France or the US, as in Iraq, to come and support us. We would have no problem with that. We don't choose the color of the water that puts out the fire in our country. So the Russians sent the force you call Wagner? To me, it's not a problem. I'm not ashamed to wear this T-shirt and this badge. Their help is accepted, but not without cost. Joseph is one of the few politicians to denounce how the Russians now control local natural resources. The Russians came because they saved the Tuadera presidency. They've insisted on which mines they wanted, and they did it out in the open for everyone to see. Who oversees the operations controlled by the Russians? No one. They report to no one. And yet they take our wealth. What the international community is doing for Ukraine, they must do for our republic. Because the Russians came to attack Ukraine, to destroy Ukraine, to steal from Ukraine. And it is what they are doing here, too. This restless activist has been imprisoned many times, but refuses to back down. Our people are wise. They accept everything today. But when they start to analyze things, you'll see how they choose to protect their own interests. The time will come when the Russians will know that they are no longer welcome in the Central African Republic.
In the meantime, the mercenaries are still in the Central African Republic, ready now more than ever to defend the governments that serve their interests. This model appeals to other authoritarian regimes, and Wagner's power is set to expand. This is Reporters Plus. Thank you very much for watching. Do stay with us here on France 24. More news coming.